Hello and welcome to this lesson lab module titled Student Collaboration Paired Discussion that was designed and produced by GoTeach11. Your journey starts here. In this course, you'll focus on creating opportunities for students to collaborate. You'll learn about the habits of discussion and be able to lead students into a paired talking task. For today's presentation, you'll need your copy of Teach Like a Champion 2.0 by Doug Lamov. You'll demonstrate your learning in a 10-minute mini-lesson. To earn credit for this module, you'll use effective directions to pair students together so that they could discuss their responses to the do now. You'll use an in cue to decide who speaks first and an out cue to switch partners. This ensures that both students have an opportunity to share. Finally, after a few minutes of discussion, you'll conclude the task with a whole group debrief where you ask the partners to share something from their discussions. This will allow you to build insight together as a class and serve as a starting point for the next part of the lesson. Now that we know what we're learning, what we'll need, and how we'll show our learning, let's do this. So what's the point of having students discuss anyways? Doesn't this just take away from your teaching and open up possibilities for off-task behavior? Well, ultimately, the purpose of including explicit opportunities for students to have discussion with a partner is to build the ratio of participation. Not only does paired discussion provide extra time for students to process information, in a paired setting, you know that both students will be active in their learning by actively listening and actively speaking. This differs from having all conversation flow through the teacher where only one of the students is actually sharing information at a time. Remember, the opportunities you provide students communicate about your content may be the only time students ever actually discuss that topic. So we'll wanna shape those conversations so that they're productive and they support deeper learning. This module will review how to hold students accountable during these interactions. It's important to note what does and what doesn't count as discussion. Doug Lamov states that a series of comments that occur in the same room that aren't really connected to one another doesn't count as discussion. There needs to be some sort of response to what was just heard. He says a discussion is supposed to be a mutual endeavor by a group of people to develop, refine, or contextualize an idea. Part of the proficiency rubric mentions that the discussions need to be purposeful, and we can make the conversations purposeful by providing the right sort of questions. We can categorize questions as either being close-ended or open-ended. In general, close-ended questions are more surface level, and I want us to look at some examples of these close-ended questions and think about what the following discussions might look like. We have questions, who is the main character? What is the cell cycle? What's the bill of rights? How do you multiply two-digit numbers? What's a calorie? And what is impressionism? You can imagine that the responses to these questions would be fairly limited because typically there's only one correct answer or response. Thus, it's better to provide open-ended questions when we want the conversations to truly be purposeful. Here are some examples of open-ended questions that share a similar topic as their close-ended counterparts. Consider what the following conversations might look like with these questions. What might the main character do next? Why? Why is a cell cycle important? What might cause a cell to mutate? What rights should be guaranteed? When might you need to multiply two-digit numbers? Explain. Describe your most difficult workout. How many calories do you think you burned? How does this artwork make you feel? Why? You can see that with open-ended questions, there's not necessarily one right answer. Thus, there's a benefit to sharing ideas and that the students are building insight together. When you as a teacher ask students to synthesize their ideas following the partner sharing, 
when you ask them to come to a consensus by forming a statement from their pairs, you're promoting deeper learning and more in-depth discourse, which is a primary goal for collaborative tasks. One of your roles as a classroom teacher is to help shape healthy discussion habits so students are prepared to have high levels of academic discourse once they move on. Some of the fundamentals that we must teach, model, and encourage are having students speak at an audible level, tracking or watching the speaker, and using others' names when referring to something that he or she just said. We also want them to follow on what was just stated, meaning that they build on or clarify what has just been said. Providing sentence starters facilitates academic discourse by providing a model for discussion. Finally, opening up the learning experience to discussion means that there will undoubtedly be times when the conversation gets off track. Thus, managing the meta means understanding that when things start going a different direction than what's intended, we need to steer our efforts back to the original topic. Teach Like a Champion 2.0 has some great examples of what healthy habits of discussion look like. At this time, please pause the video, navigate to my.teachlikeachampion.com, and watch video clip 43. This shows students having some book talk. As you watch, consider what steps the teacher took to get the discussion to this level. During your mini lesson, you're going to need to allow pairs of students to have a discussion about a question or questions that you provide. This paired discussion is commonly called turn and talk, and Teach Like a Champion 2.0 has some great information for how to implement this technique. Learn about this technique now by reading pages 324 to 331. As you read, consider relating components of turn and talk to providing clear and precise directions. So, you'll need to give clear, precise directions to get students turning and talking. This means we'll need to include information for how students will pair up. Will they turn to a shoulder partner? Will A's talk with B's? Or will they stand up, hand up, and then pair up? There should be some sort of cue for one student to begin speaking and an out cue for the next person to talk. We'll want to keep the pace and production up by setting precise time limits and being clear about what we should see with the discussion. Are students turning towards each other? Are they going to be asked to write a sentence that combines their ideas? Or should you hear them using sentence stems that you've provided? Crest of the wave means not letting the conversation go on too long and ending it at just the right time before off-task behavior has a chance to take over. Again, there are excellent examples in video clips 44 through 46 at myteachlikeachampion.com. Take a look at these video clips, and as you do, see if you can identify some of the components of turn and talk, as well as evidence for habits of discussion. I'm sure you've noticed by now that the language between turn and talk and clear, precise instructions seem to have overlap, and the reality is there's quite a bit of synergy between the two. In the next few slides, we'll detail the connections between these two modules so that you can achieve the criteria to receive proficient for each module. The middle purple column here contains an example set of directions that lead students into paired discussion. Please note that I've included the extra challenges of checking with a student for understanding and using sentence stems to promote academic discourse, so you may or may not include these aspects within your own mini-lesson. As I read these instructions, think about how you'll adjust these for your own mini-lesson. When I say dynamic duos, the student with the sharpest pencil will have one minute to comment on the quote on the board. I should see partners facing each other before responding. Jose, what are we doing? Nice. Ready? Dynamic duos. Then give them a minute to speak. Ready to switch in three, two, one. Dynamo number two. Use the sentence starters to build on your partner's comment. You'll have a minute and a half. Ready? Switch. 
If it's still not clear which part relates to which, I've placed 18 arrows in a bracket to try to quote unquote clarify how the components work together. Take a moment to make these connections. When you plan for the second lesson lab, it may help to have this graphic available to make sure you've got all your bases covered. On this slide, we have a few opportunities for pair discussion, and this is to help you bridge the do now to the turn and talk that happens later. Remember, you'll also need to reinforce or rehearse a procedure in this lesson lab, so it's really important to lay out what you need to do and, and, and figure out how much time that you're needing to dedicate for each of these things. So do now, we have a few opportunities. Uh, quick write is a super common do now. This is when a teacher provides a question related to an image. It could be related to a quote or even a short video, video clip. The students respond to that question in writing, maybe in a journal or just on a scratch piece of paper. And later on, when you have that turn and talk, they could share the responses that they, that they wrote down. Now, if you are sharing a video clip, make sure that you post the URL or a QR code for students to scan so as they enter class they could get started immediately and they're not waiting for you to have to start the video. Another opportunity for do now is solving a problem. This could be a math problem, maybe it's a fun, more fun math problem, an engaging math problem, or it's a real life scenario. And later on they could share how they solved it and compare methods and um, get more ideas. Another do now opportunity is writing a controversial statement on the board and then having students pick a side whether they agree or disagree and listing the reasons why they feel that way. Later on when it comes to paired discussion they could first meet with someone who they agree with, compare reasons and then they can meet with someone they disagree with and have a, a short argument with the reasons and this lends itself really nicely to whole group discussion afterwards. Another opportunity, not the last one, but just another one that we're listing here is a categorization activity where perhaps you list concepts that you want students to write on individual post-it notes or index cards or scrap paper, and then they spend time in their do now trying to categorize some of those concepts. Later on, they could compare how they categorize those concepts in a paired discussion and try to come up with labels for each of those groups. So just a few ideas to bridge the do now to the turn and talk that that'll occur in the second lesson lab. Congratulations, you've done it. You finished your learning for student collaboration paired discussion. You're on your way to making your class as engaging as possible for every student the second the tardy bell rings. Let's take a look at this proficiency rubric one more time. Again, you'll need to pair students using effective direction so they can discuss their responses to the do now. You'll use an NQ to decide who goes first and then an OutQ to switch partners. And then after both partners speak, you'll conclude the discussion with a whole group debrief where you're asking one of the partners to share what they discussed. So Make sure you need to ensure that the discussions are purposeful, that they're use, that you're using these open-ended questions. And for that extra challenge, provide some sentence stems that'll help them have even stronger academic discussions. Here are a few pointers to help you be successful in the second lesson lab. Second lesson lab is meant to capture a strong start of class where you direct students to begin, do now, and you Reinforce something, a procedure that maybe hasn't been going well and you want to, want to address it. And then after that, you provide an opportunity for students to share their work or share their ideas from the do now. And this is all just a way to begin class, and it's pretty typical. You don't necessarily need to share the daily lesson objective like you did in the previous lesson lab, as this would realistically occur after you debrief for the turn and talk. However, you still do want to start with the TEKS as a reference to contextualize the tasks and the turn and talk should be related to a state standard or the topic of learning. Your instructional coach may ask you what SE you use to guide the learning tasks, so be ready to share the TEKS 
before the mini lesson starts. As stated before, you may want to practice giving your directions, and a way to do that is just to write them down on a note card. It's okay to read off of the note card because that's just a way you plan for a teacher and you want, you want to be efficient. So that's completely fine if you read from the note card as you transition students from independent work to paired discussion. Analyze your directions. Make sure that they're meeting the criteria from the modules. Don't be afraid to add personality to your trigger words. And the way that you select students to go first, you could certainly have some fun with that. Finally, you'll end the mini lesson after you debrief the partner talk. There's a lot of moving parts to the second lesson lab for sure. So you'll want to make sure that you've timed out how long it'll take to complete each portion of the mini lesson to ensure that you're staying on track and able to meet all the criteria in 10 minutes. Thanks for watching this module titled Student Collaboration Paired Discussion that was designed and produced by the Region 11 Education Service Center. This video referred to content from Teach Like a Champion 2.0 by Doug Lamov. Images were downloaded from 123RF and Pixabay.